surprisingly, you know, astonishingly, she is still uh, the most uh, popular politician in Germany. But uh, I personally think she leaves a poisonous legacy. German voters will go to the polls this Sunday, the 26th of September, to elect a new government. So ends the chancellorship of Angela Merkel, who was in power for 16 years. But who will succeed her? Joining me to discuss is Wolfgang Drexler. He is a foreign correspondent with the German newspaper Handelsblatt. He's based in Cape Town. Wolfgang, welcome to the CRA channel. Could you tell our viewers, firstly, what is the electoral landscape looking like in Germany in the run-up to Sunday's polls? Yes, uh, David, thanks for having me. Um, let me start off by telling you that German politics at the moment is in complete flux. Uh, it's impossible to call who will form the next election, who will be the chancellor. Nobody knows. There are many undecided voters at the moment, almost half of it. Uh, I personally think that the pollsters will probably end up with a lot of uh, egg on their face. Um, I don't believe the latest forecasts. The latest forecasts see the Social Democratic um, the challenger or oh, vice chancellor uh, to Angela Merkel, uh, Olaf Scholz, as the favorite. And then after him, you know, it's um, uh, Armin Laschet, uh, the, the elected um, successor to Angela Merkel, uh, and in number two. And then it's the Greens party uh, on uh, uh, number three. Um, so in order to place all these uh, um, the, the politicians and the coalitions that are uh, plentiful, uh, how many uh, coalitions we've got, 10 altogether are possible. Um, that's all due to Merkel shifting the political center to the left, often more left than the Social Democrats uh, have been. And thereby she was opening a huge gap on the right. And that gap was filled uh, by the alternative for Germany, the alternative for Deutschland. That party, and that is important to know, it's, it's hardly mentioned, it's a, so, it's a, a party that has been demonized, if I want, may, may say so, as a party of right extremists. Although a, it has absorbed mainly uh, many disaffected conservatives um, that were stranded in the political wilderness uh, and, and were unhappy with Merkel's left turn. So that actually explains why we've got these uh, coalitions or these uh, wealth of coalitions. In the past, we had a clear cut um, two party coalitions, the Christian Democrats uh, forming a coalition with the, free Demo with the Free Democrats, the Liberals, or the Social Democrats with the Greens, or also with the Liberals. So it was a two party coalition. That's all gone now because of these 10 to 15% that goes to the right wing party that are out of the equation. Nobody wants to form a partnership uh, uh, um, uh, coalition and alliance with them. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30 day free trial for more content from the CIA. So Wolfgang, what about the coalition scenarios? What combination of parties do you expect to form the next government? I, I think it's, it's most likely um, that, that we find a, a coalition between the Social Democrats, the Greens and the Free Democrats. Uh, it will be an extremely difficult coalition because the worldviews of the Liberals and the Greens are fundamentally opposed. Uh, the Greens are more a party that wants to, uh, has a, a pseudo, I would say, a, uh, socialist policies. Uh, the, uh, the Liberals, as you know, are free market driven. They are more uh, putting the individual in the center. Um, whereas the Greens are more a collective party. So it would be very difficult to bring these two worldviews together, but it might be one of the uh, options. The other one is uh, if the uh, Christian Democrats uh, become the strongest party, then you would probably find a coalition uh, of them with the Greens and the Free Democrats, uh, depending on whether the Greens are willing uh, to enter such a coalition. So it's all... Uh, for the reasons I just mentioned, an entirely different worldview with the Free Democrats. What would be the worst option for Germany? And, um, and, and that is the, the, the point that I wanna make because it is the important for the world also, if that coalition comes into being, Germany will, in my opinion, be a different country. And that is a coalition of the left-wing parties. That is also not only likely, but also highly likely. I mean, we've got three or four scenarios that are likely to highly likely. And these left-wing coalitions of the Greens, the Social Democrats, and the party that's called Die Linke, 
That's a party on the far left, the former East German Socialist Party it came out of uh, that party would form an ideologically driven coalition that would put, in my opinion, a lot of things at stake that have been achieved in Germany over the last uh, 75 years since the end of the uh, Second World War. So that the left has, uh, the party Die Linke, or I call them the left here for you, has got strong sympathies with Cuba and Venezuela. Uh, so you can imagine what might happen. They want to leave NATO. So if that party became part of the government, it would be rather disastrous. And interestingly, neither the Greens nor the Social Democrats have ruled out a coalition with that sort of party, although they have been asked many times whether uh, they want to do so, they were not prepared to do that. So it's a rather, as you can see, complicated mix. Um, what's out of the question, it seems, is a sort of bourgeois, a liberal conservative um, a coalition as has as as, as governed Germany for the last uh, 30, uh, for altogether 30, 40, 50 years out of the 75 years after the war. Uh, that, that is due to what I mentioned earlier on, because the 10, 15% vote on the uh, outer right is out of play, uh, because nobody wants to form a coalition. That means if the uh, Christian Democrats gain about, say, 25%, and the Free Democrats 12%, uh, they only get about 37 to 40%, and that would only uh, uh, be sufficient for a minority government, and that is an unknown creature in Germany has never been formed. The Germans like it straightforward. They like uh, a coalition that makes 50% plus. So Wolfgang, let's reflect now on the chancellorship of Angela Merkel, because she's been in power for about 16 years now and has really stamped her personality on German politics. Uh, but in many respects is uh, quite an opaque figure still to outsiders looking into German politics. Uh, what is your assessment on her administration and the various governments that she led. David, I'm um, I, I'm rather critical to say, sometimes even scathingly critical of Angela Merkel, and can't understand why she's been so adored uh, abroad uh, and even at home. I mean, uh, um, surprisingly, you know, astonishingly, she is still uh, the most uh, popular politician in Germany. But uh, I personally think she leaves a poisonous legacy. And you can see the poisonous legacy that the Christian Democrats, in association with the Christian Socialists in Bavaria, as you know, that's a sister party uh, that, uh, that, that only um, uh, fields candidates in Bavaria, uh, that they have now, a week before the election, the incredible low number of about 22, 23% of the voters behind them. 22, 23 is by far the worst performance of that party since 1949, uh, when the new Germany, the Bundesrepublik was founded. Uh, and that is, I think, clearly due to Merkel, who was sold out on all conservative values, also economic ones. She has uh, she has basically lived up, fulfilled all the wishes of the social democrats in these grand coalitions she has formed over the last eight years with them. Abandoned everything that the uh, Christian Democrats stood for, uh, meaning on uh, the economy, on security, on all these issues uh, uh, where, where the Christian Democrats were uh, were always um, very strong. Uh, she has got this half-baked uh, energy policy. She, uh, she is a, Germany is about to switch off the last nuclear power stations now and makes itself almost completely dependent on green energy, quite unique in the world. No other country has followed, very expensive also. Uh, energy prices have increased uh, enormously, 40%, I think, over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, not as much as ESCOM, but uh, German prices were far above ESCOM prices before, so for um, uh, it is uh, an enormous uh, um, uh, amount that they have gone up. And then there is, of course, especially the disastrous policy on migration. You might remember that Merkel lost uh, control of, uh, of the state in 2015 when Germany just opened the borders to 2 million people without identifying and checking them properly. With this legacy will be with Germany, uh, in my opinion, for generations to come. Uh, then there is, um, and that is for me the, the, the biggest mistake, because now we are seeing what's panning out in Germany uh, with, with people uh, coming in that we are not asylum seekers, as uh, we would have given uh, basic that, of course, asylum to, but mainly economic migrants that came, by far the majority. Then there is the unresolved uh, euro crisis. 
Uh, nothing has been resolved. Uh, Greece is still part of the EU. The next problem, uh, Italy is dawning uh, already on the horizon. Uh, and then Germany is stuck at the moment in a completely confused Corona policy. Uh, politics try to micromanage everything in Germany. It purely focused on the health aspect of the crisis at the expense of the economy, of the arts, of all the, of the children, of all the other issues. It was purely health uh, that, that drove uh, the German government and it intimidated up to now its population with horror scenarios, scenarios of, um, of incidents of people getting, uh, getting sick and then uh, uh, ICUs being overwhelmed. Nothing of the kind has happened. Not one of these uh, projections ever materialized. Uh, so I think uh, the German population is now stuck, uh, in my opinion, I've just been there for three months, in almost uh, a spiral of fear that it doesn't really uh, come out. And society is over the um, vaccination issue, uh, deeply divided because uh, non um, people not vaccinating are being portrayed as basically almost an evil to society for not doing so. Uh, so there I see some really, you know, rather ugly comparisons to a time in Germany in the 30s where other people were stigmatized. So deeply divided society, uh, uh, very much in contrast to Great Britain, where Boris Johnson was just celebrating this Freedom Day uh, two months ago, or Sweden, Denmark, uh, that try their utmost to open up their society and show the willingness to do so, whereas Germany uh, on the opposite, at the opposite, you know, uh, tries to keep control of everything uh, and has a completely over bureaucratized um, process. So that's why the CDU is in this complete disarray. It's for me, it's a burned out shell. It stands for nothing. That's why the voters are so, uh, you know, uh, abandoned, uh, abandoning the party uh, and are uh, clueless uh, what to do. Uh, and um, if I may add this one aspect that I find interesting, why Merkel is now losing it's losing because a lot of left-wingers have voted for Merkel's left-wing nuclear policy or for letting the world into Germany. That's exactly all left-wing issues that were um, favored uh, by the Social Democrats and especially the Greens, of course, that were astonished what Merkel did with switching off the uh, nuclear power stations. Uh, they, they, they couldn't believe their luck. And these voters now are migrating back to the left because the successor of Merkel desperately tries to develop some conservative image again for the uh, Christian Democrats, but is not very successful as he's not willing to break with the past and wants to be uh, basically somebody who's um, uh, trying to please all sides without much success as it seems. Wolfgang Drexler, thank you very much for joining me on the CRA channel. Let's hand over to you, our audience. What do you think will be the legacy of Angela Merkel's chancellorship? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to the channel. And until next time, take care.